In its heyday, Pillsbury Mills was at the heart of a vibrant Springfield neighborhood. It kind of looked like the Waltons, you know, everybody knew everybody. Today, the old flour mill is a decaying relic containing asbestos. Asbestos fibroid poisoning, and then it developed into stage four cancer, and then he passed away with it. It's the biggest eyesore in the city of Springfield. This is a nightmare. At one time, a major employer here in Springfield, the Pillsbury Mills plant, has become nothing more than an eyesore and a health hazard. You couldn't pay me to go in that building. Built at the end of the Roaring Twenties, the plant eventually employed 1,500 people, mostly from the surrounding neighborhood. In the 1980s, work at the aging plant started to slow, and Pillsbury sold it to Cargill before it closed in 2001. It was later sold for the plant's scrap value. Demolition work was underway in August when the Illinois Attorney General went to court claiming the demolition contractor was improperly removing and disposing asbestos. And anybody who knows about asbestos knows how dangerous it is. Uh, diagnosed with asbestos fibroid tumors. Diane's father was employed at Pillsbury Mills from 1948 until he retired in 1985. He died from asbestos-related disease that was linked to the plant. He passed away in 2012 as, as a direct result from the asbestos that he was contaminated with from Pillsbury. The Sangamon Valley group of the Sierra Club obtained state EPA photos showing untreated asbestos throughout the plant and on the property. It's unsafe. It's got the asbestos laying on the ground. This community over here has been asking for help at least 10 years, I believe, or if not more on doing something with this thing. Community groups have joined together to try to get the plant safely removed, holding two public forums in recent months. You're not gonna get asbestosis. You're not gonna get mesothelioma. That guy over there's kids are, and he's mad. James Johnson of the NAACP says the people of the Pillsbury Mills neighborhood have been forgotten. This is our community, and uh, we would like to see this eyesore uh, be dealt with in a way that makes everyone happy. Shipping and receiving docks were closed a long time ago. Residents here would like to see the city of Springfield get involved, but they can't as long as the courts are involved. This is in the heart of our city. Right. And why are they sitting on their hands? We couldn't step in, otherwise you take over the ownership rights. I caught up with Mayor Jim Langfelter. He believes the city will have to wait until the case filed by the Attorney General works its way through the courts before any action can be taken. Try to get grants uh, because it is an enormous project. It'll take millions of dollars to uh, really correct uh, the state it's in. But we certainly hope that something is done to deal with the asbestos and any other toxic materials that may be in this plant. Al Piper is with the Sierra Club and urges immediate action. Asbestos abatement and any other toxic material that may be might be present should be dealt with immediately. Neighborhood Association President John Keller says home values continue to plummet. 60% of the property value has been snuffed out with this eyesore. We requested an interview with the demolition contractor but did not get a response. It had been done right, we wouldn't have this problem, but that isn't what happened, so now we're in the middle of a mess. It's a death trap if somebody gets inside. It went from a shiny star to a black hole. A black hole that may not see the light of day anytime soon. For the IT, Doug Wolf, WAND News.